Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Burrito the Donkey, an adaptation of an Aesop's fable written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Burrito the Donkey Once upon a time, a father and daughter were walking to the fair with their donkey named Burrito. It was a beautiful day, pale and blue with the first warm breeze of spring in the air. The father was short and square, and the daughter was tall and lean. He called her Beanpole, or Polly for short, and she called him Pop. The donkey was a donkey, plodding happily along with bags of produce to sell at the farmer's market. Do you think they'll have rhubarb at the market? asked Polly, thinking of how her mother would turn it into the best strawberry rhubarb pie in the whole wide world. It might be a little early, but maybe, Pop said. Rhubarb is one of the first things to grow in the spring, so you just may be in luck. If there is, we should buy a whole bushel, and then we can eat pie every day for lunch and dinner, too. Pop laughed. If you eat that much pie, you just might start to turn into one. You'll have to sleep in a crust. Good, said Polly. I'll sleep in a crust, and you can roll me to school. They both laughed and kept walking, taking their time down the old dirt road. There were faster ways to get to the market at the fair, but they were in no rush, and they both preferred the scenic route. As they traveled... Pop sang to Burrito, always the same song in a clear, kind voice. Oh, making people happy is an easy thing to do. Why worry about me when I can worry about you? Why worry about me when I can worry about you? Soon, they passed by a group of craftsmen working with saws and hammers and planks of wood. Together, they were building a small tool shed on the corner of their yard. You're going too easy on that donkey, one shouted as they passed. Seems like you should be riding instead of walking. Maybe they're afraid to fall off, shouted another. Maybe they're related, added a third. The workers laughed and Pop blushed a bit. Like his song said, he wanted to make everyone happy and hated when people called him out for anything. Maybe we should ride Burrito, he said once they had passed. Polly, you want to hop on up? Can he handle it? She asked. Of course, Pop said, slapping the donkey's rump affectionately. He's a strong old boy and you're not a pie yet. Polly laughed and climbed on up. Burrito hee-hawed happily and kept on plodding down the road, his big ears twitching in the sunshine as a song drifted in. Oh, making people happy is an easy thing to do. Why worry about me when I can worry about you? Why worry about me when I can worry about you? They rode past a little house where some old-timers were playing dominoes on the porch. Polly gave them a big wave, but they scowled at her. Say, this is what's wrong with this generation, an old man grumped to the others. No respect for the elders. The young just take and take and take. No, my pop put me up here, Polly said, and pop nodded. Your poor old father lets you have everything. Did you ever stop and think about his aching bones, his aching back, his aching aches? My knee swells when it rains and it looks like a bag of popcorn. I, I'm... A big old bag of popcorn! Pop, pop, pop! They kept on walking past the old timers but Polly and her dad were both blushing now. Polly slid off Burrito's back and smiled up at her father. They're right. You should ride for a while, Dad. Pop nodded. He just wanted people to think he was doing the right thing, so he swung himself onto the donkey, and they kept on down the road, singing to himself all the while. 
Oh, making people happy is an easy thing to do. Why worry about me when I can worry about you? Why worry about me when I can worry about you? Pop sat tall and Polly skipped along and Burrito plodded happily, stout and strong, and barely noticing the extra weight on his back. The fair isn't far, Polly said, jumping to try and see over the horizon. After the market and the rhubarb, can we stay and look around? Sure, we can do that, said Pop. They walked a little further and soon came upon a small park with a jungle gym and swing set. Little kids were playing and their parents were watching from benches, chatting and sipping steaming mugs of coffee. Pop waved and a nearby mother clucked her tongue. Shame on you, she said, shaking her head and furrowing her brows. What kind of world is it where a father rides and makes his poor daughter walk? I don't mind walking, Polly said. Hush now, dear, the adults are talking said the woman. That old donkey looks strong enough for the both of you, she said to Pop. Let that poor child ride before she gets blisters on her little feet and cramps in her little legs. Hey, I'm not a little kid, said Polly. Won't you please think of the poor child, wailed the woman. Children walking while their parents ride. The world is upside down. Her little feet are going to pop right off, and what will you think then? You'll think, oh, her little feet! I should have let her ride. How could I have been such a lout of a father? Ugh! Oh! Pop and Polly looked at each other and rolled their eyes. Still, Pop wanted to make people happy. So he helped Polly get onto Burrito's back behind him. The donkey he hawed a little with the weight, but he seemed happy enough to hold them both. That's better! The woman snapped. Thanks for the advice, Pop said, giving a smile and a wave as they headed down the road. Burrito was feeling the weight now, but Pop's song kept his spirits up as they walked. Oh, making people happy is an easy thing to do. Why worry about me when I can worry about you? Why worry about me when I can worry about you? The going was slow now, with Burrito so strained, but they could see the colorful tents of the fair in the distance. I can almost smell the strawberry rhubarb pie already, Polly said, and Pop smiled. Burrito grunted, though, and slowed down even more. A group of ranchers near the road had stopped to brush down their own horses for the fair and called out as they got close. What in the world are you two thinking? shouted one of the horse grooms. That poor donkey can't carry the both of you. You're gonna ride him flat as a frog on a freeway. We, I, they, ugh, Pop stammered. You should give that beast a break before you break that beast. Of course, Pop wanted to make them happy, and Burrito did seem a little winded. He got down and took Polly off as well. The ranchers shook their heads and looked away, obviously thinking it was the least he could do. The thought of them thinking he was too rough on his old donkey really upset Pop, so he decided to do just a little bit more. Come here, Burrito, he said. Pop took the bags off the donkey and gave them to Polly to carry. Then he bent down and hefted Burrito onto his shoulders. The donkey gave a mighty alarmed hee-haw, but let himself be hefted into the air. There we go, said Pop. I'll give the old boy a rest. Polly looked at her dad like he was crazy, but she just shrugged. If you say so. Now we're both walking, and the donkey doesn't have to carry a heavy load. This will make everyone happy for sure. Polly nodded, and they made their way to the fair. Burrito was heavy on Pop's back, but they were close, and he toughed it out. A short while later, they walked into the gates of the bustling fair, and Pop waved and called out a big, Hello! to all his friends and neighbors. Everyone turned and saw him standing there, hunched over, with Burrito riding square on his back, 
and they all burst into laughter. Pop! called a friendly farmer. What in the sweet Georgia Brown are you doing? He's giving the donkey a piggyback ride, shouted someone else. Everyone laughed even harder, and Pop put Burrito back on the ground. He let Polly run off to find her friends, and he trudged to the market, head down and embarrassed. Next, he traded all their goods as fast as he could, doing his best to ignore it when people snickered at him. Once he was done, they made their way back home again. This time, Pop and Polly walked, with Burrito happily trotting along between them, his bags full of fresh spring rhubarb. Same as before, people shouted their advice as they passed, but this time, Pop ignored it. He had learned that in trying to please everybody, he had ended up pleasing nobody, and he had embarrassed himself in the process. But that night, Mom made them a strawberry rhubarb pie, Polly ate half, and Pop had a big slice, happy to have learned his lesson, and even happier to be sharing a fresh spring pie with his family. The End Thanks for listening!